In the previous segment, we talked about effect sizes. An effect size is a number that summarizes how the output of a model changes when we change the input. When we're looking at the effect of a quantitative input x on the output y, the effect size is a rate and has units of y divided by x. But for an effect size involving a categorical input on an output y, the effect size is a difference and has the same units as y. What happens when the response variable is categorical? That is, when the output is one of a set of named levels instead of a number. This is more than a technical question. It goes to the heart of what should be the output of a model function for a categorical response variable. It turns out that providing a category as output while natural is very limited. Better to give a number or set of numbers the probabilities, according to the model, of the class of interest or of all the classes. As an example, consider a model of the categorical variable married as a function of explanatory variables like age, education, and sex. As always, we need to have a model from which to calculate the effect size. We'll compare the model output for two different ages. As you can see, the output is the same for both ages. Does this mean that the effect size of age on married is zero? No effective age? Not really. Changes in categorical outputs are all or nothing, either a change or no change at all. It's as if we were tracking one individual's over the years. No change this year. No change this year. Still no change. Finally a change. But our models are really about groups. For any individual, marriage is all or nothing. But for groups, we can talk about the probability of an individual being married. Many model architectures for categorical outputs do calculate the probability of each possible level of the output. 